May the 4th be with you. I'm Ashley, and today we are going to make a bo helmet here on Sheffield. Let's check it out. Okay, so I got the files for this bo helmet off of galacticarmory.com. I'll put a link in the description below. And I printed this out in Hatchbox PLA, and I used the Artillery Sidewinder X1, which is a larger format printer for this build. Once it was done printing, there was a bunch of supports that I had to remove, so I just used a pair of needle nose pliers to get in there and pull all the supports off. I thought it was so cool, I had to try it on just to see what it would look like, and I was pretty excited. So I made sure to put on a thin coat of this UV resin because I didn't want it to be too clumpy so that I didn't have to sand it down too much. And once that was done, I just set it out in the sun to cure. So I'm not entirely sure what happened when I put the resin on top of this helmet to smooth it out. I used Matter Hacker's Build Resin and I don't know if they just didn't shake the bag enough to mix it up or what, but I had a lot of trouble curing this. I left this in the sun for like a day and a half and it just didn't cure, so I ended up having to buy one of those massive UV lights. And it still kind of worked okay, but it's still a bit sticky, so I'm going to uh, spray just some IPA on it and kind of get the stickiness off, and then I can coat it with some primer and then get to paint and then sanding. So, let's do it. One thing to note, when you're using UV resin and it's been cured and you want to get the excess off, you need to use 91% or 99% isopropyl alcohol. Anything less than that is not going to work to remove it. So I built this super quick uh, turntable type thing, that way it's easier to paint the helmet and work on it. Alright, we got our first coat of primer down. So I'm going to use wood filler to fill in these kind of big gaps. I should have done that before I did the filler primer, but I'm coming back to do it now. I'm just using this little metal tool that I got from Harbor Freight. Actually, I'm just going to use my finger. I think I can get it smoother that way. So I just don't want to make it clumpy because then it's just going to be harder to sand. So typically when you're working with 3D printed props, any kind of sanding you want to do, you want to do wet sanding. Doing this will just make the whole process a lot easier. Okay, so I've sanded the majority of the helmet now with the sanding sponge, but to get into here, I'm just going to use this little file that I got from Harbor Freight. So I have a little crack here, so I'm just going to use some UV resin to fill that in. And then the good thing is we're out in the sun, so the sun can just dry this for a few minutes. Okay, so now it's time to put another coat of filler primer on it, but since I just sanded this all, I'm going to use a tack cloth to get all the dust off. That way I don't have more to sand than I need to sand. This cloth is a little bit sticky, and then we just rub it over the whole thing, and then it will get all that loose dust off of there. Alright, so now that all the dust is gone, now we can hit it with the filler primer. So the really nice thing about the filler primer is if you think you did a really good job on your last sanding uh, pass on your helmet, um, it's definitely here to prove you wrong. So I thought I did a really good job sanding and getting it smooth, but I have a ton of missed spots. So I'm going to have to basically sand this whole coat away and then add some more. So once I sanded this coat of the filler primer, I ended up putting a spot putty glaze over the whole thing. Just a super thin coat to really just even everything out and really smooth it out. Alright, so now that I've wet sanded this up to 220, I'm going to take a tack cloth and get the rest of the dust out. And then I'm going to put this gloss black uh, base coat on to kind of see if it's passable or if I still need to do some more filling and sanding. Um, hopefully I can just get away with just starting to paint this thing, but we'll see. Alright, I think that's good. Okay, so I gave this one last final coat of sanding primer and I sanded it down up to 240 grit and now it's ready for me to put on this metallic base coat. And I'm using this silver metallic spray, that way I can do some weathering and when I get the paint off it looks like it uh, chipped down to the bare metal. 
At this point of the build, Elsa, my intern, decided she needed to do an inspection. She was not impressed. Okay, so I have the base coat of the metal color down and I'm just gonna use some of this masking fluid to paint onto the areas that I wanna remain that metal color. Uh, this stuff will dry and then once I'm completely done painting, I can come back and rub it off. And then instead of having like the blue or the white paint on it, it will be that bare metal color, which will be really cool for distressing this and just making it look like it's more worn rather than a plastic prop, so. We'll see how it goes. I really like using the masking fluid on this project because when you removed it, it just ended up looking so cool to see that base metal color shining through. Okay, I'm so excited because it's finally time to put down the first coat of the blue paint for her helmet. And so I'm gonna put a base coat of this Nantucket blue. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. So I'm just putting light coats on that way to make sure that I don't get any drips or runs because I spent a long time sanding this and that'd be very annoying. Okay, so now it's time to paint the darker colors of her helmet, and I am basing this off of the helmet version in the Mandalorian series. And so for that, I'm gonna use a mix of this de detailing masking tape and just this normal painter's tape, uh, just to make sure that I don't get the darker paint on the areas that don't need it. So this helmet ended up taking a really long time to mask off all the different parts. I'm sure there's an easier way I could have done it. I probably could have used paper mixed with that, but I was just already in the taping mode, and so I just stuck with that. And once that was done, I hit it with that darker indigo blue color. Okay, so I used my Cricut vinyl cutting machine to cut a few different sizes of the Night Owl uh, design that bo -Katan has on her helmet. And I didn't really know exactly what size, so I kind of just guessed. But so I'm gonna end up going with the one that's about two and a half inches in height. And I think that's a pretty good size for the size that this helmet is printed out as. So I'm just gonna apply these stickers get them down, and then we can start applying the next color of paint. So my camera died right when I started taping up this helmet to start painting the front, the night owls. Um, so I did put a black base coat for the little triangles up top and for the V-shape down here. So once I put the vinyl stencil on top of that and get that down really nicely, then we can come in and spray the white or like light gray for the actual night owls themselves. And then we can just continue on from there. So once I put the Night Owl vinyl decals on and it was all nice and smooth and pressed down onto the helmet, I hit the final layer with a white coat of paint. Once I had all the different layers of paint on, I was finally able to take off all that masking tape and take a look and see what this helmet really ended up looking like. And it was actually really cool to see this process unfold and just see the different parts of the helmet finally come together as one and just see it as a whole. I will have to say though, because I let the paint dry completely before I took off the vinyl stickers, when I took off the V in the middle, it did bring some of the paint with it. Ultimately for me, that was okay because I was adding battle damage to this helmet, so it just added to it. So once I had all the different masking tape off, it was time to add the battle damage and I was just constantly looking at my phone at different reference images that I had taken screenshots of from the Mandalorian show of Bo-Katan and I just constantly reference it and I try to get it as close as possible. It's definitely not perfect. Obviously, I'm a human, I make errors and it's not the best, but ultimately I was pretty happy with how this came out. So I basically just took the different colors of spray paint and I'd spray a little bit on the table and then use a brush and kind of add in the details. To speed up this process, I used a heat gun in between adding paint layers, that way I didn't have to wait like hours for this paint to dry, and especially too because this was a randomly cold week in California. The final step in the weathering process for me was to make a black paint wash just to kind of dirty up the helmet a little bit. The black wash will leave kind of a dirt and grimy look into the different crevices and corners of the helmet, and it's basically making it look like dirt has accumulated in the places that it would if you're using this helmet in real life every day. Okay, so I've traced the template of the visor out on a piece of paper and I've just taped it to this, I think it's a welding visor and I'm gonna use these scissors that I got on Amazon to cut it out. So let's just do it and then I can use the visor install kit I got off of Etsy to install the visor to the helmet. That way I don't have to use like hot glue or something crazy. Cutting out the visor was a little trickier than I thought. It wasn't super hard, it was just awkward and the scissors that you use to cut that material aren't the best. So my advice is just go slow because you could end up cracking it. I did end up cracking one of the sides ever so slightly, but luckily you can't really see it in the final product. So my friend Jameson over at El Toy Creations on Etsy makes this really cool kit that will make it super easy to install your visor to your 3D printed helmet or resin helmet, whatever helmet you have. So it's a pretty cheap kit and it comes with all these different parts. 
And all you do is you glue them in the key specific places and he has reference images and a little instruction template of what to do. And it's just really nice and it's very hassle free and you don't have to fight with like glue guns or epoxy or anything else crazy. So I highly recommend this kit because it saved me a lot of time. The only thing left to do was to hit the whole helmet with a semi-gloss clear coat just to protect all the paint that way it wouldn't scratch off. Considering this is only my second prop I've ever made, I'm super happy with it and I absolutely love it and just seeing it complete and on this little stand and just seeing the 360 view of it made me really happy. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I had a ton of fun making this helmet. It was a lot harder than I thought. I've only really made one prop before and that was the Gazer Beam helmet from The Incredibles. But with that, I had my friend come out and help me because I was still really new to 3D printing and just prop weathering in general. So I tried to make this one as accurate as possible to the helmet that Bo-Katan wears in the Mandalorian series. It's not perfect. And you know, I did make the Night Owls a little too small, but overall I really like how it looks. And the cool part about this too is these parts are magnetic so they can come off and store easily. But let me know if you have any questions down below. I'll be happy to answer them. And I will link all the different files in the description below for the template that I made for the triangles and the night owl. And also where I got the SCL files from. So thanks for watching guys. See ya and happy May the 4th be with you.